Is it possible to achieve a zero emissions world? Perhaps over the, over the very long term. I think we've got a, a lot of steps that we would have to take to go there because we have basically a, a very emission intensive economy uh, at this moment in time worldwide and it would take a long time I think to change that. But over time, yes. Well, most of the um, emissions of greenhouse gases that we see at the moment come from power generation, uh, from industry and from the transportation sector. So those are the areas in which you, you really would need to see change and, and you are beginning to see, uh, to see that change in that businesses, I think, are, are driven by a number of factors in trying to reduce their emissions. It's, it's not just concern over climate change, but it also has to do with the cost of energy as part of the production process, uh, concerns over energy security, uh, concerns over, over air quality and, and energy supply. So in a way you see a number of factors at the moment already driving businesses to, to reduce their emissions and, and come to grips with, with this issue. But they very much depend on, on governments providing a clear sense of direction in terms of where they intend to go from a policy perspective so that businesses know what, what investment decisions they can afford to take. Well, we know that the uh, looking at the financial markets is going to be absolutely critical. We, we, we hope that the world economy is going to grow. Uh, the International Energy is, Agency has calculated that over the next 25 to 30 years, the world will be spending $20 trillion in order to supply the energy that uh, is necessary in order to fuel that economic growth. And the question then is how is that investment going to be going to be made. If it's made not taking climate change into account, it'll push greenhouse gas emissions up by 50%, whereas the scientific community is telling us that emissions need to go down by 50%. Now, since 85% of that $20 trillion investment is going to come from the private sector, it's very clearly the private sector that we have to engage in making sure the emissions go down by 50% rather than up by 50%. And that means, I think, that government, that businesses have to give governments a much clearer indication um, of, of what is an investment framework, an investment, or I should say not an investment framework, but what are the investment conditions that would make it possible for businesses to take emissions down rather than up. So I think a, a critical part of the way forward is really going to be to listen to businesses very carefully, to understand from businesses what kind of policy environment they need in order to be able to, to act on climate change and then for governments to put in place both the, the policies and the financial frameworks that will allow businesses to act on climate without destroying their competitiveness. Um, do I consider myself a, a climate leader? Um, I don't know. I mean, you, you try and do things in your personal life to the extent that you can. I've sort of got energy saving light bulbs and solar panels on my roof and my official car is a Toyota Prius which is very efficient. Um, at the same time I'm, I'm a terrible person from the point of view of the number of flights that I make uh, traveling the world trying to ad address climate change. But at the same time as an organization we are trying to make ourselves carbon neutral as well so to even though you you have to emit CO2 in the context of your work that you're at least trying to make an effort to, to compensate those emissions as well.